Alrighty, that is all the NBA we had to go over for today. So now let's shift gears to the NFL, folks, and start breaking down this Monday night football game from last night. Browns at the Steelers. Big Ben's final ride, folks. Final time at Heinz Field, last home game. The emotions were running high. I mean, that's what the entire game and the pregame was all about. Big Ben, Big Ben. Big Ben, Big Ben, and he's gosh dang lucky he won the game. So then after the game, it was all about Big Ben, Big Ben walking off the field. Then he went in the tunnel, and then he came back out because he wanted more time on the field. So that was another kind of 20 minutes, and then he walked back in. Uh, but, you know, he, he does deserve it, and he has earned it. Big Ben has been a fantastic quarterback in this league, one of those kind of aging out quarterbacks as we transition into this new era of Joe Burrow. Burrow, Patty Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, potentially Mac Jones, Jalen Hurts, fantastic. Who am I missing? Am I missing anybody? I don't know if I can count two, uh... I don't know if I can count him, but we know the league is in great hands, especially with Joe Burrow, folks. Man, I, I, I can't even stop gushing over these last two weeks' performances by Joe Burrow, folks. I can't get it out of my mind. It's been fantastic. Um, so yeah, Big Ben's definitely deserved this, folks. Two-time Super Bowl winner. There was a stat last night that was a pretty great stat. It was uh, quarterbacks that have 60,000-plus passing yards and won two Super Bowls, and there was only three quarterbacks, folks. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and... Ben Roethlisberger. So, first battle Hall of Famer. You got to give him his dues, folks. Winning Super Bowls. Him and Mike Tomlin never having a losing season. That's just Mike Tomlin in general. But we know Big Ben and Mike Tomlin do overlap some. Uh, so, shout out to Mike Tomlin as well. 15 straight seasons of never having a losing year. I mean, that's so impressive. And we know the stat of, you know, uh, Matt LaFleur never losing back-to-back -back games. I mean, both of those stats are just truly mind-boggling. Three years straight, never losing back-to-back -back games, going 13-3 and at minimum every single year for Matt LaFleur. And then Mike Tomlin just being so gosh dang consistent here in Pittsburgh. Obviously, having Big Ben helps a little bit. And same thing with Matt LaFleur. Obviously, having Aaron Rodgers helps that out a little bit. But you still got to get your team right and ready to play. And this Steelers team, for the last 15 years have always been right and ready to play and ready to make the playoffs and always kind of really always in the playoffs. I mean, this Steelers team really was kind of running the AFC North the last 15 years with Big Ben. A little bit of a uh, knockoff dynasty of the Patriots. Obviously, the Patriots obviously, folks, with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. But, I mean, with the Steelers, Mike Tomlin and, uh, you know, uh, Big Ben, I mean, they were kind of up there of always dominating their division, always kind of the favorites of winning that division, and always kind of getting in the playoffs because they won the division. And now, I, you know, we know, folks, the Ravens won one here and there. We get it. But overall, folks, we're talking overall for a 15-year stretch. It's been pretty gosh dang good by the Steelers team. So Big Ben deserves all the praise, deserves to get emotional. I've got no problem with it. We know this has to be his last season. And I think that was, uh, I was a little excited that Big Ben was finally acknowledging, you know, last year really should have been his last year, but he wanted to give it one more go. Once again, he's earned that. And what a class act by the Steelers organization of letting him, all right, you want to come back one more year? Okay. And then how about even that? You know, not even drafting the replacement, not even having that kind of narratives clouding and surrounding his last year. Because because if you could have imagined, you know, the Steelers team drafted a quarterback or even kind of got in, you know, kind of like a Gardner Minshew-esque type of quarterback that's real solid and does, does deserve a look at a starting job. Big Ben, um, you know, if the Steelers did that and had kind of, you know, a better quarterback than Mason Rudolph at the two, I mean, there would have been, you know, quarterback uh, scandal, quarterback competition, the narrative throughout this entire year clouding and getting in the way of Big Ben's kind of last ride a little bit. So, I mean, whether the Steelers did that or not and planned that purposely, I don't think they did, but overall it worked out like that. So, I guess. Do we give him credit for that? I don't know. I, I guess we'll give him a little, the Steelers organization, a little bit of credit for not ruining and, uh, you know, uh, not making Big Ben the forefront of the overall narrative of this season. 
So, big bands, last ride, all that, got it going, and the Steelers get the win. Cause, cause you, could you imagine if the, Ste if the Browns came in, division rival Baker Mayfield gets the win at Heinz Field, big bands last game there, that wouldn't have been so great, and I would have loved to see the stories today. Uh, you know, I want to be in that alternate universe where the Browns won last night, upsetting big bands last home game. Unfortunately, we don't get that. We get, you know, the the happy ending. The happy, the ending everybody loves. Big Ben is about to ride off into the sunset. They still have a chance to make the playoffs, and we're going to talk about that in our next segment as we walk through Week 18 here. But Big Ben deserves the praise. He deserved this night. He didn't look great this night, and I think we can all agree with that. And there's going to be a stat here that I'm going to say, and it's going to blow your mind. You know we talk about Dink and Dunk. Big Ben took Dink and Dunk to a next level I didn't even know was possible, folks. So let's just start talking about that, shall we? Let's just get into it. Big Ben, this definitely needs to be his last year. We knew this coming into the season. We knew it week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. We knew, we've knew we known it this entire year. Big Ben not able to move the ball, push the ball down the field. And when we saw he was not able to do that the first four weeks, we knew the Steelers were in trouble because longevity does not get better as time progresses. We know this. So, you know, Big Ben, bad the first four weeks, still bad, you know, the last two weeks. We saw this coming the entire year. So, glad that Big Ben has finally recognized, hey, I, I can't stay one more year. So, that's kind of why I was excited with Big Ben finally kind of acknowledging. Because, you know, this, you know, the first, you know, 10 weeks of the season, 11 weeks, 12, maybe even all the way up to week 13, 14. It wasn't Big Ben coming out and being like, hey, this is my last ride. I'm on the farewell tour. I'm all this. I'm all that. No, it was all kind of crickets. And we weren't hearing anything. And we were kind of getting a little uh, antsy about, hey, Big Ben, we, you're not here next year, right? Right. Right. I know Mike Tomlin and kind of, you know, the Rooney family. The Rooney still own the Steelers. Is that right? I'm almost certain. I don't think anything's crazy's happened. Uh, you know, Art Rooney, uh, I think uh, RIP to him, but the Rooney's family, I think, still owns the Steelers. If, uh, if that's wrong, I apologize. But to overall, the Steelers organization, I know they're kind of like, all right, Ben, this is the year, right? Last year? Yeah. All right. You know, obviously, they want to kind of do the stand up thing and not kind of force Big Ben out since he's done so much for Pittsburgh and all that. Once again, we get, you know, what y'all clamor and demand every time. Some organization does a player dirty. Y'all are like, oh, you know, the business always gets in the way, always. Well, you know, the side of the business not getting in the way. So let's kind of remember this one. So, you know, the next time a, st uh, a football team, an organization from the owner cuts a player kind of disrespectfully, you know, you're, you guys aren't out on, you know, social media being like, oh, this always happens. Where's the respect? Where's the class nowadays? No, nobody's got any class. Nobody's got respect anymore. Hey, where's the respect here? This is Big Ben we're talking about. Two-time Super Bowl winner. Where's the respect? Respect. So let's cool it on the respect talk. The Steelers, I mean, uh, there's not much more you can do in terms of respect fact than what the Steelers did with Big Ben because honestly they should have canned him last year but all that aside Big Ben deserved this moment we're back at it all right um, what were we doing? All right, Big Ben stats here. All right, Big Ben, we knew he needed to retire. We're glad he re finally recognized it because this passing performance, folks, is just absolutely not good. I don't want to go atrocious. We'll try to respect Big Ben, but this is atrocious. <laughs> this is truly atrocious, folks. It's crazy. Big Ben did not go out and win this game. Najee Harris in the defense won this game. B uh, ben Ra um. The other quarterback, Baker Mayfield, actively lost this game. Kevin Stefanski actively lost this game. So, Big Ben deserves the least amount of credit for this win. But that's what we've been say saying all year long on the Steelers team. It's not Big Ben going out there and winning these games, folks, okay? And it was in full focus last night. Everybody kind of wanted to not acknowledge and recognize it because it was Big Ben's last night in Heinz Field and everybody's too busy clowning Baker Mayfield. Granted, I, I'm not disagreeing with y'all, but y'all were too busy doing that instead of seeing Big Ben dink 
and dunk and dunk and dink and dink and dink and dink and dink. I don't even what's the, what's a word worse than dink and dunk? Let me get our trusty thesaurus up here. Can I get a can I get a thesaurus on dink? Let me get dink up here. Dink, dink definition. What do we got? Dink meaning dink, dingy, drop shot, nitwit, jerk, nerd. Let me get a synonym for dink. I got bookworm, dork, geek, grind, nerd, swat, weenie, wonk. You wonkin'. He's dinking, dunking, and wonking out here. The man is a wonker, folks. Big Ben in his final game, or his entire final year, is a big ol' not even dinking dunker, a big ol' wonker, folks. This man is wonking out here. So, Big Ben Roethlisberger, are you ready? We'll, we'll tell you the stats, and then we'll tell you this one stat fact that's going to blow your mind and maybe, <laughs> maybe even lose a little respect overall for Big Ben. So, here we go. Big Ben Roethlisberger goes 24 of 46, folks. Bad. 52%. That's bad, but it's not as bad as this stat fact that we're going to have for you, folks. 50, what do we say? 52%? Already lost the percentage. Uh, but anything under 60, I just automatically classify as trash. Y'all know how we do that. Yeah, so 52%, 100, 123 yards. 123 yards. This is where the uh, what are we, what are we, donk? I already forgot the word, folks. I've got so much running through the mind. Wonk. This is such a wonk, folks. 123 yards on 24 completions. Oh, my God. That is wonk to the max. I can't even classify that as dink and dunk, folks. That's wonk. Wink and wonk. Wink and wonk. Wink and wonk. There it is. Dink and dunk and wink and wonk, folks. See, y'all know it's going to come to us, folks. That's what we do here. It will eventually come to us. Wink Dinking and wonking. Dink, dunk, wink, wonk. We finally got it 100% perfected, folks. All right. So he's a winkle, a big old wink and wonker, folks, at 123 yards on 24 completions. One touchdown, uh, one interception. Could have been dangerous. Big Ben throws his interception at the end of the first half. No time to do anything for the the Browns. Big Ben from his own 49-yard line just going deep, trying to do something. And unfortunately, it was an interception. So Big Ben's turnover, nothing bad, no, no, no nothing concerning. Um yeah, I mean, we're more concerned with the wink and wonk. I mean, you know, throwing picks, you know, you're, what are you going to throw? A two-yard pass that gets intercepted? Most likely. But other than that, we're more concerned with the wink and wonk. All right, Najee Harris, a great game. 28 rushes for 188 yards, one touchdown, an unnecessary touchdown, but a nice little stunting touchdown. I've got no problem with stunting. Absolutely stun, stun, stun. Talk your stuff. I love it. A minute left in the game. Game's over. Just trying to ice the clock. One more first down does it, but Najee Harris says, hang on, I'm going to get mine. Big bet. Big Ben's last night, I'm going to still make it a little bit about me, and I'm going to go get mine. And Najee Harris on third and two rips off 37 yards for the big old tug to truly ice out the game. Uh, uh, Baker Mayfield throws one more interception, and then that gives Big Ben one more opportunity to go out on Heinz Field and take a knee, one more standing ovation. How many did he need? He had a ton. I mean, this man was just coming back for seconds on every kind of celebration. Last time walking off the field, everybody was giving him round of applause because Najee Harris got the touchdown and then Baker Mayfield's coming on the field for the last minute. Nobody thought Baker May um nobody thought Ben Roethlisberger would come back out of the field, but then he does, and everybody's applauding again, so that's two times applause, and then Big Ben does it again at the end of the game, walks into the tunnel, and then comes back out just to walk back in the tunnel once again. Second round of applause, standing ovations, and all that, so Big Ben was milking it, but once again, he's earned the right. We give the man credit. We're not knocking Big Ben. We're just talking it all out, folks. That's what we do here on the show. We talk everything out. All righty, so that was Big Ben last night. Najee Harris, great night, 28 rushes, 188 yards, and a touchdown. And then who was Big Ben Roethlisberger slinging the ball to? We had Ray Ray McLeod, four catches for 35 yards. Deontay Johnson, eight catches for 31 yards and a touchdown. Pat Fryermuth, five catches, 22 yards. Najee Harris, three catches, 18 yards. And Chase Claypool, three catches for 17 yards. 
So, once again, it was only 123 yards. It's nothing impressive. And are y'all ready for the stat, folks? Are y'all ready for this stat? Because here it is. Last night, Ben Roethlisberger had the second lowest yards per attempt by a quarterback with 40-plus passing attempts in a game in NFL history. Second lowest yards per attempt. Wink and wonk, folks. Wink and wonk. He had 46 attempts with 123 passing yards for a 2.67 yards per attempt. Two yards per attempt. If you go every down, four downs, that's only eight yards on uh, you know through the four plays. You're not even picking up a first down if you complete a throw. Four straight times, you still don't even get the first down. Do you see where we're having a little bit of an issue buying Big Ben in his final year? Okay, wink and wonk. Is that what we're going to remember Big Ben for? His wink and wonk the last two years? Or the great two rings and 60,000 plus passing yards that he had? Only time will tell, but I'm not going to let him live down this wink and wonk, folks, okay? Uh, the lowest was Jesse Palmer in 2003, who had 43 attempts uh, for 110 yards, 2.56 yards per throw. So that's who he's compared with, Jesse Palmer. Ever heard of him? I've heard of his brother Carson, but never Jesse. What are you doing in this league? Get out of here. So Big Ben, the wink and wonker. Alrighty, and then on the Brown side, once again, everybody clowning Baker Mayfield today, and I don't disagree with y'all. This was not a great game. You know, you have a chance to upset the Steelers. I know the Browns don't have anything to play for, and that was so crazy to us to see the spread line change so drastically. Just because the Browns had nothing to play for, going from Browns minus three and a half throughout the week to Browns plus three game day kind of crazy so that's just how much Vegas truly put an emphasis on still being in the hunt and the Browns not being in the hunt they thought that they would just flounder and not really give it give it their all and that's exactly what happened last night Browns struggled to put up any points nothing in the first half yeah they threw two touchdowns together but it was never really competitive maybe on their first touchdown it was but then after the Steelers got the field goal and really made it a two-possession game, you knew this Browns team would never be able to really overcome that, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Steelers win two possessions, 26 to 14. The Steelers, if you got it at plus three and a half, fantastic value, you cashed in. And even if you had to swallow three points for the Steelers on game day, you cashed in as well. Fools on us. We bet it. We bet the Browns both times, minus three and a half, plus three. We really thought Baker Mayfield and Kevin Stefanski would play way better. Baker Mayfield would play so much better. And then Kevin Stefanski, what the hell was going on with that? This game plan was absolutely trash. He only had four rushes with Nick Chubb in the first half. And now we know it was because the Browns head coach Kevin Stefanski said running back Nick Chubb, who had just 12 carries for the game and four in the first half, was limited due to an injury to his ribs. But what sense does that make? Injury to the ribs, but then you play him late in the game instead of in the beginning of the game. So how much was he truly injured? Why did you still not run the ball? You knew you that you were having kind of health and kind of COVID issues with these running backs this entire season, especially with Kareem. Hunt so you didn't even have kind of a number two running back consistent here throughout the season and you still didn't kind of game plan for that and get another great running back in you still got Darius Johnson who got it done for you without Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt uh, you know without you know that was in the middle of the year I want to say around weeks 9 10 11 where we get Darius Johnson and he came in through fantastic but y'all still weren't running the ball or establishing the run I just don't get what Kevin Stefanski was thinking out here relying in just making it all about Baker Mayfield. When has that ever worked for Kevin Spansky? Even going back last year when they actually had success winning games, it wasn't Baker Mayfield slinging the ball 40 plus times a game for 400 yards and four touchdowns every game. No, no, no. It was Baker Mayfield, game manager. Uh, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt both getting it done. So I don't understand why Kevin Spansky has tried to go away from that every single game. It makes no sense to me. I mean, we see what the Colts are doing. Uh, you know, with uh, you know Frank Reich not letting Carson Wentz sling the ball because they've got Jonathan Taylor and other great running backs. The Browns are the same way, but Kevin Stefanski, I don't know what it's night and day from Kevin Stefanski last season to this season. I don't even recognize the Kevin Stefanski of this year. So 
I'm not putting all the blame on Baker Mayfield, even though I am putting a you know a solid blame on it, at least 50%. Kevin Zafanski may make up the other 50% with a mix of maybe one or two other players, but overall, it's Kevin Zafanski and Baker Mayfield really deserving to share the blame for the loss last night. And not only the loss, but the overall lackluster, flounder, big-time offensive production. What was that? Baker Mayfield not getting it done. Kevin Svansky not calling it the right way. It was just absolutely atrocious to watch. And I really thought the Browns being, you know, division rival. And yes, you know, Big Ben's a great quarterback and all that. Great story and all that. But this is the Browns, his rival. He's been whooping that ass the last 15 years. You don't think Baker Mayfield and Kevin Svansky would have loved to ruin Baker Mayfield's last home game? So the fact that they still couldn't even get up to that point to be competitive, it's like, what are we doing? Doing. Y'all got so competitive last year when you faced the Steelers in the playoffs and the Steelers were just without everybody due to all the injuries the last, you know, in the playoffs and Big Ben, you know, being at his worst because, you know, we're already 18 weeks into the season last year. The Browns had no problem running up the score and obliterating the Steelers right from the get-go, but now this time they do? It's just like Kevin Stefanski, he's got big question marks heading into next year and so does Baker Mayfield. So, you know, with the whole, you know, does Baker Mayfield deserve the deal or whatever. We know that the Browns have picked up his fifth year option. So he will be a Brown next year. It's just whether he gets a contract and extension this offseason if they wait till next year. But that's what I would do. Baker Mayfield does not deserve a contract extension. Kevin Stefanski, Baker Mayfield, one final year. Or if Kevin Stefanski is going to kind of save face, he may try and get a quarterback this year because he knows he can't rock another year without with Baker Mayfield. Because if we're getting, getting Kevin Stefanski and Baker Mayfield both floundering big time next year, we're cleaning house. And I'm going to pick a head coach to start fresh with who's going to pick his own quarterback to start fresh with. I'm not giving Kevin Stefanski the job here. If he's still not able to kind of make it work and we don't have to see this Browns offense and team be the best in the league next year we just need to see Kevin Fansky get back to what he did last year because it was just so much better play calling offense and all that and then we still have this other nugget of information of Baker Mayfield being banged up all year how much did that play into the overall production and play of Baker Mayfield on you know Baker Mayfield can't make any excuses because he went out there every single week and if you're out there you are telling everybody hey I'm at least good enough to give you my best and you know your best has to be good to win and it wasn't so Baker Mayfield, I you know, kind of using a little bit of his injuries as an excuse. We get Baker uh, Browns. Baker Mayfield said he will have surgery to repair his injured shoulder, but did not specify when. Mayfield added he will discuss with his agent and family whether he will play in the Week 18 finale. But he had like another quote here where it was just like, "Yeah, I'm just totally banged up and all that." So yeah, we knew you were banged up. We knew you kind of made that clear, but you were still out there. That is not an excuse. We cannot go into this offseason giving Baker Mayfield the benefit of the doubt of playing injured. You still put it out there. You still went out there. And you didn't get it done. So that's on you. This was a bad season by Baker. And, uh, you know, we weren't even really impressed with him last season when they were winning all those games and making the playoffs and looking good. So not going to be the best offseason for, for Baker Mayfield in the media and all that. But I do believe one more year, Kevin Stefanski, Baker Mayfield. And if it doesn't work out next year, you blow it all up. Kevin Stefanski is not cut off for the job. One good year and two bad years, that's not good, folks. One good year and, you know, two solid years, yeah, you know, you get the th fourth year. Two good years, one bad year, yeah, you get the fourth year. But one good year and then the following subsequent next two years are worse and, like, the the this year's worse than the year before, it's not looking good for Kevin Stefanski. Alrighty, let's get to Baker Mayfield here. Here we go. B. Mayfield goes 16 of 38. He didn't play good. We know this. 42% uh, worse than Wink and Wonker Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, he did have 185 yards and 16 completions, so he wasn't winking and wonking, but that completion percentage has got awful. Two touchdowns for Baker Mayfield, two interceptions. First interception came before his touchdown uh, in the second quarter, and the Steelers put up three points off that interception. And then the last interception comes on the last drive of the game when they were already losing. No chance to come back so we don't really weigh that other interception that much 
Running game, really non-existent. Nick Chubb, 12 rushes for 58 yards. Baker Mayfield took off twice for 16 yards. And then Dearness Johnson just could not get it going last night. Five rushes for 13 yards, but I still think you had to stick with it. There's no reason not to run the ball in the first half. It's not like the Steelers were blowing you out. They had a 10-0 lead going into halftime. They had a 13-7 lead going into the fourth quarter. There was never a moment where you're like, oh my God, I have to abandon the run. And then Kevin Stefanski still relied on Baker Mayfield to single-handedly win the game. What do we say about Baker Mayfield? He is a game manager. He cannot single-handedly go out there and win the game himself. A little bit like Ryan Tannehill, folks. We always compare those two. Uh, so I don't understand what Kevin Spansky is doing. Once again, if we're having this man as the head coach thinking Baker Mayfield is the guy, is the answer, ugh, not the greatest look optically for Kevin Spansky. So it's going to be a real interesting offseason for this Browns team. And then who was Baker Mayfield slinging the ball to? He had Donovan Peoples-Jones, three catches, 76 yards. Jarvis Landry, four catches, 43 yards. Austin Hooper, two catches for 28 yards. And David Njoku, four catches, 28 yards, and a touchdown. And that touchdown, Baker Mayfield threw to David Njoku in the uh, in the end zone. It was fantastic. One-on-one -on -one matchup. He throws it up. That's what we want to see. But, you know, the Browns struggle getting into the red zone at all the score. So, unfortunate there. Um, all right, before we move off of this game, I just want to quickly just show you why Baker Mayfield is struggling and kind of how I'm just kind of seeing uh, great quarterbacks maneuvering and navigating the pocket compared to these other quarterbacks that are kind of, you know, question mark. The jury is still out on them overall. I'm talking Tua. I'm talking Baker Mayfield. I'm talking a little bit of Mac Jones. I'm talking a lot about a lot of young quarterbacks and all that. But um, before we get to that play, I just want to show the interception. Uh, yeah, uh, did I want to show the interception by Baker Mayfield? I forgot why I wanted to do that. Um, <clears throat> Thirteen fifty-six. Let me get to this. All right, here we go. Uh, this is kind of what I'm talking about of uh, maneuvering in the pocket and getting it done. Uh, we're going to get Baker Mayfield with this interception right here. This is trash right here. Uh Baker Mayfield, play action pass, rolling out to the left, and then just throws this one way behind the receiver here. That's the interception. That's really the one lone interception he had. It came at a bad time. They were down 7 nothing in the second quarter, and, uh, you know, you need to score. And, you know, we know the Steelers got three points off of this turnover, but bad accuracy there by <clears throat> Baker Mayfield, unfortunate. And then we get Big Ben, first pass after, first play after that interception. Just watch. Ben Roethlisberger in the pocket because uh, Baker Mayfield, younger quarterbacks always look to escape out of the pocket, even you know uh, when the pocket is kind of great and clean. But after that kind of two and a half, three seconds, they think you know the pocket's supposed to be breaking down. I got to get out of the pocket here. So Baker Mayfield does this all the time. It was all the time last night, folks, thinking he could step up. No, no, no. The defenders were playing that. They're going to cut you off as soon as you make that first step. Baker Mayfield not having any pocket aware. I don't want to call it awareness. I it, There's no pocket maneuverability by Baker Mayfield. There's none. He doesn't stand tall in the pocket. He's looking for that first sign of danger to get out and roll out of the pocket and we see Baker Mayfield maneuvering out of the pocket not being accurate so we need Baker Mayfield to stand tall in the pocket he doesn't do that but look at Big Ben here who's immobile as heck folks as we all know the man is old as heck 39 about to turn into dust has to retire really now because uh, you know he can't even throw he's averaging 2.6 yards a throw folks a wink and wonker so, Baker Mayfield not being comfortable in the pocket at his young spring chicken age. But here we get Big Ben Roethlisberger. Cold coming off the bench because of the sudden change of possession. Uh, just old as heck. Not able to move because he's old. He's 39, aging out of the league. But Big Ben, watch how he maneuvers this pocket right here. Here we go. Dropping back. It's a deep route, so he knows he has to hang in there. Goes a step up in the pocket. We get the edge rusher by the Browns taking a swing at Big Ben. And what does Big Ben do? He just shakes it off. He saw that edge rusher coming. He didn't try to roll out of the pocket. He didn't try to step all the way up in the pocket and try and take off with it. No. He stepped up. He shrugged it off. He kept his eyes down the field and then he just unloads it all the way down the field 
nice 50-50 ball. It wasn't accurate, so, so it wasn't that great. But overall, it's a 50-50 ball. He just throws it up, and it could have made a big play. But it's just so much difference uh, from a veteran who's won rings in this league to know that you don't always have to just run out of the pocket at the first sign of danger. Tua does this, but it's a little granted because the offensive line is so bad. Baker Mayfield has been doing this all last year, all this year, all this game, not learning. Settle down. Settle down. The pocket's fine. Step up. Shift one step right. Shift one step left, but Baker Mayfield, you know, he's on a three to five step drop back, and then he thinks, you know, nothing's open for the first two seconds, and then he sees a little bit of a gap in the middle of the field, and then he takes off. One second. Hello? Uh, hey, uh, All right, copy. Yep, bye. All right, hopefully that's the last time. I apologize, truly, folks. Uh, but yeah, Big Ben, or uh, Baker Mayfield just roll, running up in the pocket and trying to take off with it, and then he gets taken down immediately. One, two yards behind the line of scrimmage, on the line of scrimmage. Baker Mayfield, he thinks he can see an open lane to run with, but it instantly gets closed as the minute he tries to take off with the ball. Just stay in the pocket, calm your feet, and see the field. Uh, you're going to be able to hang in there. Yes, not all the time, but most of the time you will. But escaping out of the pocket, now you're rolling out to the right. You're cutting out half the field now, half your routes, half your options. Uh, you know, everybody's chasing you to the right sideline. Then you make a bad pass that gets picked because, you know, you're rolling out to the left. You're running out of time. This, you're not even left-handed. So now you're kind of, you know, in a bad overall position to throw this ball. Short side of the field. And you throw the ball behind your receiver. So, <clears throat> Baker Mayfield, not going to be a great offseason for this man in the media. He's going to get dissected by us. We'll talk it all through. We'll kind of recap his season and all that. But, overall, Baker Mayfield, nothing impressive. And same thing with Kevin Savansky. So, Big Ben gets it done. Nah, nah, I guess everybody else got it done. But, Big Ben won, so I guess we can't knock it. Big Ben's final home game ends with the win, 26-14. 